hello, hello. I have arrived. Alright, so, tonight, more Arc Nights. Normally, on a Wednesday, we'd be doing the usual collab with Sheppy Sheps, but unfortunately, today, uh, their internet is out, so they, yeah, we will not be able to collab today, or, you know, in general, until such time as that problem is resolved. Yeah, I don't necessarily have any reason to believe that it will take a particularly long time to resolve, but who knows? Certainly I don't. So, let's see. What to go over today? I think I already mentioned it, but we're playing Ark Knights tonight. Um, let's see, Ark Knights. Caught up on VODs, so that's nice. Yeah. I uh, didn't stream last week. Basically, I just, uh, my schedule slipped a little bit. Yeah, I failed to take into account some some events that would that happened, largely because I wasn't informed of them. <laughs> wasn't informed of them too far in advance. Let's see. As for this week, though, I suppose, uh, I don't expect to be able to stream tomorrow, but I might be able to get in one or two more before the end of the week. Yeah, I definitely want to get... Definitely want to get caught up on, or I guess caught up isn't the word, but I definitely like to get some more Arc Knight streams out because we are coming coming up yeah, coming up on the Arc Knights and Monster Hunter collab that is expected to. I don't know if they've announced. In fact, I'm pretty confident that they haven't. But uh, yeah, the expected date for that is roughly sometime in September, as I understand it. Yes. So, hopefully, I don't expect to be done with Arc Knights by then, obviously. But hopefully, I should be a little bit further along. But yes. So that is most of everything, I think. Because yeah, we went over what we're playing today. We went over in very vague detail <laughs> what we're planning for the near future. <coughs> It's a little bit scratchy this evening, I've noticed. Let's take a quick sip. I made the crucial mistake, also sip. I made the crucial mistake of not having my water bottle open already. But yes. So, tonight's game has been discussed. Last week has been discussed. VODs have been discussed. Uh, yeah, the lack of collab tonight has been discussed. I think we're basically good. Everything should be more or less as it should be. Yeah, I guess one other thing, just sort of a, an additional note, is that usually at the end of these Arc Knight streams, I like to do a little, little presentation about characters, about the characters and the lore and stuff like that. Yeah, just sort of find a topic and talk about it a little bit. Yeah, I don't know that I'm necessarily going to commit to doing that every single stream, because I've been finding it difficult to find the time to prepare, you know. I don't do a tremendous amount of research for them, they're not super in-depth, and they're mostly just my own observations. But, yeah, I've been having a little bit of trouble finding time to get those set up in time for each stream. Which is part of why I delayed my stream last week until such time as I realized, oh, I don't actually have any time left to stream this week. But yes. So, yeah, once again, I will try to... I will try to continue to do those as much as possible, but I will prioritize actually streaming over... <laughs> over doing that, basically. And, yeah, what else is there to say? Nothing, nothing else on that topic, I suppose. It still feels weird to be getting through the, the intro so quickly. I always feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, I guess maybe that instinct comes from back when I had a regular schedule, and I stated the schedule at the start of each stream. Because yeah, I think that's basically the only thing that used to be a feature of these streams or specifically of the intros that is not there now. Of course, I could always be wrong again. But, one way or the other, Arknights. 
So let's get into into the game. Uh, uh, uh. And I realized I didn't take. Hmm. That's worrying. Hold on. Hmm. All right. I I realize now that I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I forgot to double check that the audio was, was working, and it's not been working a little bit recently. So I'm somewhat concerned. I'm going to. Hmm. Yeah, now I'm seeing the audio twice when it shouldn't be. Hmm. Alright, give me just a moment and I'm going to try and diagnose what is going on. Alright, we should be good, I hope. <laughs> yes, I would certainly not like to have another stream with no game audio, that would be quite unfortunate. But yes, I think we're good. All indications would seem to suggest that we're good. I guess that's what I'm forgetting. I forgot to check. If, I forgot to double check the audio today. And yeah, there's not. Unfortunately, there's not a convenient way for me to do that. Actually, no, there is a convenient way for me to do that. <clears throat> I can open my Twitch stream. So let me let me do that real quick. All right. Do I? Ah. Do I have game audio? Oop, that's not that's not the link. Uh oh. All right, this shouldn't take shouldn't take anywhere near amount, the amount of time that I've just spent on it, but it should be done briefly. All right, sounds like we're good. Okay. No problem. Anyway, <laughs> Arknights. Let's see, we were on Operation 11, I think. 111. Let me double check the map. Yeah, that looks familiar. So, yes. So, I suppose that's a little bit of an indication right there, but this is a, a special sort of map. Special sort of map. Let's see, we did the... I think we did the after story on, on 110. Hmm. Uh, now I'm second guessing everything, which I really shouldn't be because I didn't make any mistakes. I just confirmed that, but... Anyway, let's do the thing. Oh, yeah, another thing that I was planning on doing. I was planning on editing my squad a little bit, but I did not get around to that. Time, unknown. Weather, unknown. Visibility, low. Chernobog location of the reserve op team A2 and A4. Dr. Tiber rescue operation, final retreat phase. They probably won't make it to tomorrow. Okay. Be careful. She was the one leading reunion and destroying others. Anakiel, don't do it, it's too dangerous. You're talking too fast, Anakiel. I guess I guess the problem is that uh Onsol cut you off. Everyone's cutting each other off, man. Anyway, so this right here is W. That is her name. Yes. So I think I think this is well actually no, I was going to say I thought I thought this was our first time encountering a reunion leader. But we did actually, we did already have an encounter with Crown Slayer. Yeah, W is a little bit different though. Yeah, whereas Crown Slayer had the ability to sneak past our units essentially, W is defined by her ability to. W is defined by her ability to uh, attack in an AoE. Which is not necessarily a totally unique trait. Understood. But it is one that's somewhat uncommon. I should probably deploy some defenders, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Here I come. Got too caught up in, in all of the explaining to play the game properly. 
So, we're going to... Go ahead. Not yet, actually. We're not going to swap out Yakko just yet. But we are definitely going to swap out Yakko. I'll do my best. Let's pull off that here. Deploy. We'll deploy All Rangers right. for a little bit more damage. Unforgivable. Right. Here. We do actually... Hmm. We're not doing too bad for defense here on this side. So we might actually want to deploy another another ranged unit. No mercy for me. And now we wait. We can wait a little bit faster though. <laughs> no move can escape my sight. Maybe I should have. Awaiting orders. Hmm. Would I have had range? I'm waiting for orders. No, I would not have had range on W if I placed the rangers in front. So we've just got to wait for her to get a little bit closer in her own time. The green melee soldier known for having high attack damage. Down you go. Yeah, Melantha here orders? is known for being a pretty good unit. Uh, in particular for being very good for a 3-star. Yeah, being quite tough and quite strong if raised, if raised up a little bit. So, yeah, so there, you saw W's ability. She's kind of tough. I probably should have placed a defender, like I said, but, you Here. know. I kind of was, didn't have targeting priority in mind there. Yes. So, W's abilities are pretty strong. You can get rid of your operators pretty quickly if you aren't Perfect careful. Good work. And clearly I wasn't too careful. Clearly I could have been more careful. Alright, let's see. So, recommendation here is level 20. I don't remember... I know we leveled up the squad, but is the squad leveled up to level 20? No, they are not. At least most of them are. We'll see how this treats us. The stages have been a little bit of a challenge recently, so this might actually be an issue for us, perhaps. Time, unknown. Weather, unknown. Visibility, four. Chernobog, Operation Squad E-Zero's location. Dr. Tiber Rescue Operation, final retreat phase. <sighs> Even though we've all, we've made it to the exit, didn't you really think we just let you stroll out of Chernobog? Don't you think it's about time for someone to wake you from your daydream? Our communications have been restored and I've contacted OPD. They'll be joining with us up with us shortly. But this blasted... Watch out, she's holding on to explosives. I still can't get in touch with the recon team. Who exactly are you? I don't expect you to know who I am, but I know that person next to you. Is Reunion going to continue fighting us? Hey, hey, don't be like that. I have no love for that she-dragon Tallulah. I'm not even cut out for this goal-tending business of the pain to have to rush over here after a long day of work. So, for the sake of future cooperation, why don't we explain, exchange some pleasantries first? You may simply call me W. I've waited a long time to see that person next to you. Doctor? Dr. Tiber. I have a few little questions I'd like to ask Tiber. Would you be so kind as to give us some alone time? You're wasting your breath. Don't be so hasty. I have some information you might be interested in. Actually, we just met some rather slick fellows, quite skilled and dressed just like you guys. Though their camouflage might have been enough to fool Ursus, I saw right through their little trick. Could they be from the recon team? I'm glad they're safe. <laughs> little Bunny, are you their leader? Huh? I'm quite curious. What charm do you hold over them so that they'd give their lives so enthusiastically and unremorsefully for you? What 
are you saying? You heard me. None of them will be returning to you. Hey, you. Are you really worth sacrificing their lives over? What is the point of you doing this, W? I'm not done talking yet. Amia? Did I make you mad? You've gone too far. Good, good. Now that's more like it. <laughs> Come at me. W of the reunion movement. You've gone too far. Every life is precious. Each and every one. This is something that you'll never tarnish. Doctor. Rhodes Island, prepare for combat. <laughs> All right, let us begin. Operation 112, the final operation, operation of this commencing. chapter. Yes, here's W again. Once again, she could be a little bit of a problem. So, let's see, what do we want to do? I think I'll put a little bit of damage on her. The job. Mm, that's not quite as much damage as I was expecting. I think I might have been a little bit higher level the last time I was doing this. Uh, sorry, Cruz. <laughs> Know that I appreciate I'll find the right you, though. Place for myself, too. Yes, I might have also... Well, no, I wouldn't really have had much more range the last time I did this. I wouldn't have had a... Yeah, I don't think so. Alright, I've once again gotten caught up in my talking and not <laughs> paid attention to the tactical situation, which is bad and should not be done. Yes, so one thing you may notice is that there's staircases here. Enemies can go into down staircases, and they can go up staircases. And you know what I can do? I can deploy medic operators to prevent my units from taking excessive amounts of damage. That can also be useful. Yes, I think the one place... Other. Again, my unit priority is not really on point right now. But... We can put some more damage down range. Do I... Yeah, Cutter's definitely not enjoying what's happening here. And I definitely am not doing great on the heal front. Sasuro... Hmm, Sasuro does not have the range to cover her. And if I were to place Sasuro there, I think she'd be vulnerable to being attacked. Actually, no, I think... Now, W, W is already, is already out of picture. Of course, now, Sasuro is being exposed to enemy fire. Literally. Right. Some... Let's deploy some arch damage. Amiya is completely outside of anyone's assistance. So she might not be, she might not do too well, but she is very high level. She is tied with Nero, our highest level unit here, and definitely disproportionately so. Unfortunately. Okay. So, this is a bit unfortunate. We don't have anyone putting damage on W. And we don't really have a good source of W, w damage. Hmm. And yeah, once again, because I have placed Cutter at an inopportune time, uh, it's just not going to go great for her. Oh, and W is going not the way I expected. So, let's try this again. Please do. Um, <laughs> Alright. I'm with you. All right, all right, all right. What can we do? We can deploy. We can deploy camp file. Nothing else. Put a little bit more damage on W. Yeah, Cruz did not make it out of there quite as well as we might have hoped. But at least we won. We did do all right. I'm glad that you're so optimistic after having been exploded, Cruz. Yeah, I don't 
I don't know that I have explained what the thing that I just interact with uh, unintentionally and yeah, auto deploy. I think we'll talk about that after we do the post mission cutscene here. What a nostalgic feeling. Amiya, um, yeah, was it? Hmm. <laughs> I see. So that's what's going on. I remember now, Amiya. Um, yeah. What? I've already gotten what I came here for. We can all go now. Chew. You. W? What? You lot want to stay here and die? That's perfectly fine by me. You're all free to do as you please. We're falling back. Let them go to Lula's orders. Huh? Forget it. Things get boring when they get dragged out too long. I hate being bored. That's all there is to it. However, I do look forward to seeing you again, Amiya. As well as that person. What? Next time, I will hear the truth from you, Tiberier. Hi. What? Why is she doing this? Reunion. They've left. We've long missed the rendezvous time. Retreat back to Rhodes Island immediately. Oh, escort. Operators in the back. Amia. I'm fine. All right. Go, Amia. Boss? Where are the others? Neural and the others have already broken out with Amia and Dr. Cyber. Those who stayed behind, they're all gone. What? We're the only two left. I remember now that Free Tallulah single handedly. She knocked away our guides like they were toy bricks. That monster cut through our defenders as if they were butter. Hush, your wounds are deep. Catastrophe. <laughs> she is catastrophe incarnate. How else could she have reduced our squads to ashes in an instant? Even though I saw it with my own eyes, I, I can't believe it. He screams. <laughs> Snap out of it. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't know how. Calm down. I gave you some emergency treatment. Boss, what happened to your arm? At least I still have one I can use. Boss, you should go. I'm sure you'll be able to break your way out. We only managed to stall her for a few minutes. Until Dr. Tiber and Ami are safe, I cannot go. I have to stop that monster first. Boss, I also... The price of your life was paid with my arm. If you can live even a single minute longer, it will be worth it. I'll be right back. Take care of yourself. Boss, I'm sorry that I'm so unworthy. Amia, I'm sure you'll be able to make everyone's dreams. They're all I. Amia? Amia? What's the matter? N nothing. I just suddenly felt grief. Uh, grief, huh? Uh, uh. Don't cry. At least for now. Someone once said to me, tears should be saved for when the war is over. Now is not the time. Mm. Let's go. We're going home. 
Yeah, I believe that is our first look at the Rhodes Island land ship. We'll be seeing it a little bit more in the future, and we'll be inside of it a fair amount as well. But yes, so that leads us to the end of episode one. All right, I hope you've all enjoyed the stream. Anyway, it's time for episode two. Probably should have committed to that bit a little bit longer if I wanted to make a joke out of it, but oh well. Let's see some more story. 5.57 a.m. Cloudy. Visibility, 17 kilometers. Desert, 4 kilometers from the outskirts of Lung Men. Four days after the Chernobog rescue mission. Good morning, Dr. Tiber. You have currently been sleeping for... 9... 9... 9... 9... 9... 9... 9... 9... 9... hours. Although your reluctance to leave bed is not beyond reason, your presence is urgently needed at the Operations Command Room. Furthermore, here is some medical advice from Dr. Calcite. Please keep the windows open to maintain a, a source of fresh air, and spend some time on the deck to maintain healthy levels of vitamin D. Ah, Doctor, good morning. So, you made it, Dr. Tiber. Doctor, are you feeling better now? You looked like you were still in pain and didn't move around well yesterday. I've made a complete recovery. How about you? I'm perfectly fine and full of energy today. After all, we still have other missions to take care of. So, the sooner we can start preparing, the better, Doctor. You should get used to having to shift gears quickly here. Doctor? Even though we sustained heavy losses in Chernobog, we gained a lot of information about Reunion and, more importantly, got you out alive. Based out on the de negotiations we had yesterday, the closest mobile city to us, Lung Men, has offered us a cooperation pact and agreed to exchange information with us. We have some evidence that Reunion might be targeting Lung Men next. We'll have to wait for Dr. Calcite's mission first before we can get the rest of the information. She's still stationed within Lung Men. Lungman has granted us permission to temporarily camp near the city. They've also agreed to compensate a portion of our losses and expenditures during the operation. In exchange, Roge Island is expected to help defend the city's outskirts. But the reason why I called for you so early is... Let me explain it, Amia. Last night, we discovered another wave of Chernobog survivors making their way towards Lungman. They're expected to get there in the afternoon. We will be expected to safeguard the outskirts of District 5, just like the last few days. Only this day, only this time, there might be more reunion members mixed into the group. Because the situation is a bit different, we'll need to discuss some new tactics with you before beginning the operation. Anyway, Doctor, there's a lot to get through today, so let's do our best. In any case... Both of you, please complete your combat preparations. Doctor, once you've decided on, decided on your squad assignments, please let the operators know so they also have time to prepare. We'll set out 15 minutes after you finish your drills. Oh, and make sure you're not late this time. Listen, it's been, it's been a bit of a struggle getting used to uh, existing again after being unconscious for who knows how long. 999-999-999 hours. But yes. So, the thing that we just saw was auto-deploy, which I might actually... No, I don't have auto-deploy on this mission, apparently. Well, we'll talk about it a little bit more when I do have a mission I can auto-deploy on, such as this one. And I will, I will demonstrate it, I suppose. But yes, so, no post-story. do this tutorial just in case. And there's a specific specific bit of dialogue from one of these tutorials that I've been wanting to see. But I don't I get the feeling that we aren't going to see it at this point. <clears throat> I think that might have been one of the ones that I passed over back uh, a couple streams ago. Yes, sadly, I was in a, a bit of a hurry that day. So I didn't make time to do the tutorials that I wanted to. It's not a huge deal. But, uh, 
I could always show it later, I suppose, once I've figured out where it is. Welcome back, Doctor. Please don't feel too bad about what happened to Chernobog. At least we rescued you. The mission was a success, and our sacrifices were not in vain. Together, we still have a long way to go. That's why I wanted to show you some strategies that can be applied in the future. On the battlefield, our operators may not be able to defeat all enemies head-on. In many occasions, we will need to use creative strategies to take them down. By doing so, we can minimize our losses and preserve our strength for future operations. Deploy Fang and Hibiscus first to hold off the first wave of enemies. Ready to heal. I will certainly do so. Yeah. There we go. So, when you can, you're probably going to want to deploy medics early so that you can you know, avoid them being a high priority target for enemies. Sit. <laughs> and we can speed this up a little bit. There's not too much here to see. Heavy defender, a reunion melee soldier that has very high defense and is difficult to take down. Doctor, please watch out for the enemy's elite units. The Heavy Defender has a high attack and extremely high defense. We won't be able to hold our defense once it merges with our uh, with other enemy troops. Fortunately, there aren't many enemy elite units. We can significantly weaken them before they arrive at the main stage. The best way to deal with a large and slow enemy unit is to use a slowing supporter and a single target caster operator in tandem. As a slowing supporter, Orchid can greatly reduce enemy's move speed, thus slowing down its attack pace. When the enemy is controlled, single target casters like Durin can deal lots of damage to it. Deploy them here to prevent the heavy defender from joining with the other enemy units. Let's see it's. So, one feature of slowing supporters uh, target is that they typically have, or possibly me. exclusively, I guess I don't know 100%, okay, but all the ones that I am aware of Go ahead. have some range behind them as well which is fairly rare, as far as units go. Hmm. Ah, but I have positioned, I have positioned her slightly, slightly less than ideally, but it's fine. Because yeah, we are still able to stop the enemy. Yes. That should be basically all that we need from this. This is a lesson that I've already learned, but I suppose a refresher is always is always useful. Especially since I've demonstrated that I don't quite have the grasp on the gameplay mechanics that I thought I had. Looking after everyone's health or at the very least I'm not quite used to talking over the game and also playing it at the same time. Alright, so. Two, one. Whoops, hold on. Story. Can't forget about that. That's what we're here for, after all. 10.14 p.m. Clear. Visibility, 19 kilometers. Lungmen, District 5. Inspection and Quarantine Zone. Madam? They're here. Hmm. Attention, please. Due to the catastrophe's interference, all air traffic in Lungmen has been stopped. All entrances to District 5 will be closed in two hours. We thank you for your cooperation during Orpathy inspections. If you discover any unregistered infected, please inform a nearby peace officer immediately. The LGD will detain them in accordance with the Emergency Handling Act. Attention, please. It's just like the rumor said. Let's go, Doctor. We're here. Rhodes Island was scheduled to meet with the LGD at 10 o'clock. It's 10.14 now. You were late 14 minutes, therefore you've wasted 14 minutes of my time. I'm sorry, Madam Chen, we just found out the reunion is here. It's fine, I already know, but that's not important right now. Who might this be? Dr. Tiber's Rhodes Island's consultant. Dr. Calcite should have already informed you. Hmm. Well, since everyone is here, I'll now need you to follow me to... Madam Chen, it's an emergency! Those infected, they're not. Don't panic. First squad, stand by. Snipers, get into position. Wh what's happening? Let go of me. <sighs> what's going on? Report the situation. Let me go. Why are you arresting me? 
We didn't do anything wrong. Some infected are refusing to be taken in. We're... I can see that. Forget it. Detain them all. Disperse the crowd immediately. Open the gates in 30 minutes after you finish the review process. Also, push the quarantine inspection line forward 40 meters. Other than you and Dr. Tyver, the rest of Rhodes Island will stay here and assist with border security. The two of you come with me. If your group can't handle such a trivial task, I will not be I will not be able to assign you any missions. DC na 941 arrange some work for these people. I don't want to see any more trouble tonight. Understood, madam. Everyone, I'd like you to mm. Madam Chen is really tough. He's stricter than I imagine. You too. Follow me. We're here. Lovely view of Lung Man. What a tall building. Yeah, I kind of wanted to get a picture of just the skyline. I suppose I'll do that. I'll do that in post. Hmm. Uh... Sorry. Roach Island is undoubtedly capable. Uh, oh. Thank you for your praise, madam. However, after the Chernobog incident, there's been a massive surge of refugees into Lung Man. The infected should already know what the consequences of entering Lung Man are. I'll remind you once more. Lung Man is the next Chernobog. Dr. Calcite! Rhodes Island representative has already met with Chief Wei. Please wait here. I'll notify you shortly. <sighs> She's really hard to talk to. Dr. Typer, from here on, Dr. Calcite will be handling the negotiations. Please have confidence in her. Alright, let us begin. So yeah, we might, might want to, I mean, we're definitely going to in the near future, but might want to upgrade our squad sooner rather than later. Things are different. I don't want to hide myself any longer. Hmm. Yes. So, now, the game is expecting us to use the lessons that we were just taught. Unfortunately, actually, no, I do have, I do have some single target casters. I don't know what I was thinking. In fact, I have the single target caster that was used in that tutorial. So, let us deploy. We do you have, yes, we have Angel or Angelina. So, let's get some damage on this target. And in the meantime, we will start to reinforce our defensive line up here. Yes, camp file is no longer generating deployment points. So we should probably retreat her sooner rather than later. In, in her place, we will... Hmm. Ooh, we will overcome what confronts us. Robin's doing pretty good so far. She's not going to be able to hold the whole line herself. So I'm trying to think, who do we want to deploy? I think we'll actually place Cutter here. Place cutter here. Hmm. Okay, we do, we do, we are going to need the defender quicker than I thought. Hmm. That throws off my plan a little bit. Also, the fact that that enemy turned a little bit faster than I was expecting. Yeah, the enemies don't move in response to your units, as far as I'm aware. They just, you know, move basically. Hmm. We'll place Nero here. I wanted to place Bubble one space over from where she is currently. So this is a little bit inconvenient for us, but it's not unmanageable. I don't think the enemy has any ranged units this time around. And they're not doing a whole lot of damage to us one way or the other. So we might just be able to handle this with what we've got. Now, okay, so they definitely have a ranged unit, at least one. 
probably more. So, you'll have to actually follow the advice I, or well, we won't, we won't have the ability to follow the advice I have, or I gave. But, at least we can deploy Sasura. We'll take up Bubble, because I don't think she really needs to be there that, that badly. Yeah, so one thing about, yeah, about uh, Cutter's ability is that you can potentially attack multiple enemies with it, or, or, yeah, scale there. Yeah, I was going to see that attacks random enemies within range, or within range four times with throwing knives. Ah, okay, but yeah, this is the, the range on that ability. You can, if the character's ability has a range that is different from their normal attack range, you can click on this little icon here to demonstrate it. Yeah. Sasuro here, for instance, uh, yeah. Sasuro here, for instance, does not have a different range on her ability because it's just a self buff. Oh, uh. Oh, Cutter, uh, was knocked out there. I did. Man, I really should be paying attention to what's happening, huh? Alright, so, let's plug the hole in our defenses. So, once we have the ability to deploy, to deploy Bubble again, that would be nice. And we'll certainly do so. But yes, so as you can see, I don't know if we've gone over this before, but whether enemies, or whether enemies, whether allies get uh, defeated by enemies, or they, or you retreat them manually, they do have to spend a certain amount of time before they can be deployed again. Yeah, some units specialize in having particularly short cooldowns. These are uh, rapid redeploy units. Yeah, they are mostly, that is a, for, I guess I should say, that is an archetype of specialist, but it is a trait that is found among other classes as well sometimes. Let us go forth. Yes, it is a, it is a specialty day. of certain specialists. We also just unlocked the ability to use auto deploy on that mission. Hmm. Hold on, is this? Ah. We did the after story before we did the actual mission, I think. We did, yes. So I maybe should have paid a little bit more attention to that. Alright, no story attached to this one. So that should make it ideal to, to, to demonstrate auto deploy. I guess it's not that much different. But anyway, so, auto-deploy. Auto-deploy lets you play the mission automatically, therefore allowing you to, say, farm a mission for resources or whatnot, uh, you know, without having to spend too much time manually doing it. Yes, the operators that you have when, you're, when you do the auto-deploy version of the mission are the exact same operators that you had when you did the mission for the first time. So you'll see Pretty much all of these faces are new to us, or at least not ones that we have. I guess they're not all new, but they're ones that we haven't seen on our team. Ones that we haven't seen on our team. I was expecting there to be at least one degree of overlap, but uh, it seems that there is not. And I guess, once again, since I don't actually have to play the mission, I might as well, you know, explain right. it while it's happening. All medicine has been prepared. But yes, so. The exact same lineup of operators will be deployed, and they will be deployed in the same spaces and at the with the same timing as they were in the original mission. However, changes to their level do still take place, and differences in their uh, yeah changes in their level still take place. Any upgrades that you give them, or uh, rather, any I guess there are other types of upgrades, but mostly you know if you promote them is typically the most significant. So yeah, so the fact that the auto deploy is not the exact same does make the does make these missions a little bit or does make auto deploy a little bit unreliable sometimes in some cases. Because as we've discussed before, upgrading your units increases the amount of deployment points they cost to deploy. 
And so, that means that if you, like, promote a unit after you have used them in an auto-deploy, in an auto-deploy setup, their new cost may make it so that they don't get deployed quite as, quite as early as they would be in the original, original version of the mission, which can cause some problems. Uh, in addition to that, the fact that, you know, your, the level up that you give them to stick around means that they can also, yeah, they can also end up killing enemies faster than they did originally, which can be a problem for some characters, because some characters have abilities that uh, require them to make a certain number of attacks or whatnot, or to take a certain number of attacks, such as uh, Liskarm here, who generates, uh, she is ready. Yeah, anyway, she deploys points for her, or she generates points for her skill by being attacked. And she also gives points to nearby units. Yeah, she generates points by being attacked. Um, let's see. Yeah, Steward here generates generates uh, points for his skill by attacking. So, because of that, being able to kill enemies faster and sometimes throw off the timings on abilities as well, as well as killing enemies faster causes waves to progress faster. And so, you know, the changes that occur with your operators over time can negatively impact your auto deploys. That said, generally speaking, upgrading your units is still, you know, makes them better. So it's usually not a huge problem. It's typically only if you just barely cleared the mission if you just barely cleared the mission that, you know, any changes to your your characters would significantly impact the auto-deploy. Yeah, so I think the prompt came up earlier, but in order for an auto-deploy, or in order to be able to auto-deploy on a mission, you must have beaten it with three stars, so you must not let it, must not have let any enemies pass you by. Yeah, you must have beaten it with three stars without using a support unit. And we haven't used a support unit at all during this during this playthrough. And we might do that at some point in the in the near future. Just to show that off, because I to be honest, I forgot that that's a thing that you can do. <laughs> but yes. Before we do that though, I'm going to take a short break. Give me just a moment. Alright, I have returned. So yes. So Okay. Now I've returned. So yes, we just went over auto-deploy and all that, so I think, yeah, that mission had no story attached to it. This one, however, does. And so we'll make sure to do them in the proper order this time. <clears throat> Come in. Dr. Calcite! Amia? Tiber? So, you've come. This is clearly someone who's very important to Rhodes Island, but not someone that we have any familiarity with, given the amnesia. <laughs> Ahem. Chiefway, the other two representatives of Rhodes Island have also arrived. Ah, excellent. Please, take a seat. Miss Calcite is currently explaining the situation to me. Allow me to continue then, Mr. Way. I trust that you have a good grasp of the situation already. Currently, the Lungmen Information Network captures a lot of information regarding the reunion movement. It is good that you, represent, that you recognize the importance of this. But this alone is not enough. Lungmen still lacks key information. I believe that the Lungmen Guard Department knows very well that this simple quarantine is not enough to hold back reunion. Reunion will not obediently go through the inspections, nor will they wait for the authorities to take the initiative. That's why, without Rhodes Island's assistance, Lung Men will suffer heavy losses against Reunion should you decide to pursue the same strategies against the infected. Pardon the interruption. The LGD understands Lung Men's defenses better than Rhodes Island does. We already made preparations to deal with possible infiltration from Reunion. We, however, are not obliged to provide you with confidential information regarding our operations. Miss Calcite, please continue. 
While it is true that Lungmen has been successful in dealing with unarmed infected so far, you have not dealt with the scale of organized rioting before. This may result in unnecessary losses. From our experience, only the infected are capable of countering the infected. To my understanding, Rhodes Island has some special expertise in countering, in countering reunion. We do have experience, but I wouldn't call it expertise. Oh? I've been told that Rhodes Island was involved with the Chanabog incident, and managed to obtain a lot of intel about Reunion. No matter where you've heard that from, at this stage, the information is not up for exchange. It is but a part of our resume, a qualification that allows us to speak to you, Mr. Wei. It is Lungmen that will decide whether or not we will exchange information. If Rhodes Island cannot even provide us with this level of information... <laughs> ha! In that case, we simply have no basis for trusting your capabilities. Mr. Wei, I apologize if my words were not clear enough. What I must emphasize is, the only reason that Rhodes Island has this information is because we were strong enough to obtain it. Whatever the case may be, Lung Men cannot simply trust another group of infected. Miss Chen, if you believe that doling out punishment to the infected is more important than the actual security of Lung Men, then I will immediately surrender myself in accordance with your local laws. Then, I will sigh for my jail while watching Reunion burn down your city. This time, Lung Men does not have a choice. Your good intentions are not lost upon us despite your rudeness. However, we are also not a charity for useless lobbyists. Talk about rudeness. Madam Chen. Chief Wei, I believe it is inappropriate for these outsiders to get involved with Lung Men's confidential matters. Calm down, Madam Chen. They are still our guests. My guests. Very well. Unless they violated our laws, I will tolerate them, sir. Ah, <sighs> excuse me. I just remembered. That's right. Hmm. There is one thing I care about. Your ability. To my understanding, Rhodes Island is also assisting with suppressing the nearby infected. Madam Chen, based upon your best information, how would you assess Rhodes Island combat capabilities? Allow me to describe what I've witnessed from Rhodes Island's operations. Here are the details. And now... Let's not prove a, let's not uh, fail to live up to, I'm sure, what must be Chen's glowing praise. Operation 2 2. War of Wars. Hmm. Stage does feel very familiar, but that's not necessarily unheard of for the actual layout of the stage to remain the same for a few, few levels in, the, in a row. As you can see already, there's some differences in the enemy waves that are coming. So, we'll deploy another Vanguard. And we will start to put some damage on this fellow. Yes. And file is now, once again, out of the ability to generate deployment points. So we're probably going to want to replace her at our earliest possible convenience. I think, once again, we will try what I tried with Cutter previously. Except, ideally, uh, more effectively this time. Yes, I probably should have deployed Durin a little bit faster, but... Well... Alright, never mind, we're fine. I underestimated myself. So, since we won't have as much... Won't have as much, uh... What's the word I'm looking for? Offensive support that way. We'll deploy another ranged unit. Pointing that way as well. Cruise. Probably... Where do we want to place our medic? I think this should be fine. I do believe. Because over... 
that real place. Bubble here. Mm. Alright, so we are pretty yeah, we we're at the unit limit, actually. Which shouldn't be too much of an issue. Assuming that our enemies don't simply walk past bubble as that one showed uh the desire to do. But yeah, so one thing that should be noted is that enemies can't go through corners, basically, or they can't skip over corners. So, for instance, if we had a unit here, because we also have bubble here, enemies would not be able to pass by them. Because, yes, the, the operators do, in fact, off, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They inhabit isn't the word I'm looking for, but they, you know, take up their whole pile, basically. So, any step onto the tile is the same as any other step onto the tile, basically. Ah, crossbowmen. So yeah, so this is another ranged unit. This one has a little bit more range than previous ones. I suppose we might be able to swap out... In fact, we might want to. Uh, mm, oh dear. Okay, Cantabile. Thank you. Um, yes, now we will... As I had originally planned, the point Nero. And so Pure Stream has the slight issue here of uh, being shot at, but he can live with that. Hmm. I think I would have liked a little bit more damage on the upper lane, but we do still have Robin deploying her clips. Uh, okay. Man, Robin, Robin is the real MVP. Very good. Yes, the whole of our operation here was, was balanced on Robin's shoulders. No casualty on our side indeed. Alright. So, now Chen will provide way with a glowing review of Robin, if nothing else. And that concludes my report of Rhodes Island combat at Rhodes Island's combat operations. And your assessment? There is little reason to doubt their strength. However, Chief Wei, given their identities, I believe that from a strategic standpoint, the LGD is more than capable of handling the job. When it comes to fighting crime and preventing infiltration, the LGD is more than sufficient. Rhodes Island may be able to bring more to the table, however. Of the things that Rhodes Island has requested, there is one item that we are unwilling to exchange based upon what has been offered. The temporary defense cooperation they're providing is far from equal value. As things stand, your asking price is a bit too high. Miss Calcite, Miss Amia, I hope you two both understand. Mr. Way, a temporary defense will not be enough. There are a lot of things about Reunion that you don't know about. Based upon the data we've gathered while fighting them, if no proactive measures are taken, Reunion will seize control of Lung Men within two weeks. Nonsense. There's no evidence of that. Madam Chen, would you like to know the real reason Chernabog fell within one night? Please elaborate. Amia? Uh, sure. Roach Island wasn't just involved in the Chernabog incident. We also were caught inside the catastrophe and survived. Impressive, impressive. It's not every day I meet someone crazy enough to have made it out of a catastrophe alive. Miss Amia, please continue. I'm listening. We fought against Reunion's leader. Hmm? What's her name again? I don't recall clearly. Tallulah. Ah, right, Lula. Madam Chen, what do you think? I... I know. This is what happened to Re Rhodes Island at Chernabog. Even though Reunion managed to wrest control of Chernabog from Ursus. But, in order to expand, they'll have to deal with their resource shortages. Lungmen will be their next stepping stone. 
Even though you might be able to fend them off for a, for a while, their attacks will not cease unless you handle this situation proactively. Furthermore, there's another unknown factor. We still don't know how Ursus will respond after losing Chernabon. <laughs> well spoken, young lady. Due to the seriousness of this threat and the LGD's limited manpower, I'm not opposed to considering this temporary agreement based on the terms that were detailed earlier. But what I said before still holds. Rhodes Island's price. Uh, Rhodes Island's asking price is still too high. Correct. In order to make sure Lung Man is prosper properly compensated, I have two very simple conditions. First. Rhodes Island will help the LGD suppress the reunion threat. This includes identifying threats within Lung Men as well as those related to Fallout from Chernobog. This also includes assessing the degree that the infected have infiltrated Lung Men. I expect that you will share any potentially helpful information with us. What's the second condition then? I will tell you about the second condition after you've satisfied the first. Seems like a bit of a raw deal, but I suppose we're not exactly in a position of strength here, necessarily. Naturally, I won't ask for anything outside of Rhodes Island's area of expertise. I'm not sure I understand. Could you uh, please elaborate, Mr. Way? How should I put this? If reunion causes damage that surpasses Rhodes Island's estimates, I hope that you will help the LGD handle the situation, which may include post-disaster management. Of course, nothing beyond your capabilities, that's roughly the gist of it. I cannot say much more at this point. However, don't forget, Ryuk Rhodes Island doesn't have a choice. If you can't accept our terms, then all the conditions we discussed, as well as your requests, will be... Amia? Dr. Calcite? Mr. Wei, I would like to add one more clause to the agreement. Any interpretation of the clauses must be agreed upon by both parties. Is this acceptable? Oh, of course. I can see your respect to Lung Men, Miss Amia. Madam Chen, do you have any objections? I accept this operation. Ha. Huh. It seems like Madam Chen also has her own goal now. Wonder what that she certainly seemed interested when she heard about Reunion's leader, huh? In any case, congratulations. You've earned Lung Men's trust. Madam Chen will be responsible for your arrangements. However, be aware that the infected are not allowed to freely move within the city, as that may cause panic. I hope that you will defer to the LGT's orders while carrying out your duties. Especially Madam Chen's orders. Long men will be open to Rhodes Island, as long as your actions are in line with us. <sighs> that man was so difficult. He was so methodical when he spoke, and it felt like he couldn't be swayed by anything. Amya, you'll eventually have to learn how to deal with these people yourself. But, in the end, you did a great job. <laughs> by the way... You. Please, pleased to meet you, Dr. Calcite. Gotta be polite when meeting someone for the second, the second first time. Dr. Calcite, please don't give Dr. Tiber a hard time. <sighs> I hope our sacrifices weren't in vain. Hello, Dr. Tiber. Welcome back. Yeah, not exactly a warm welcome from our friend Dr. Calcite, but I think that should be good for us for now. Yeah, I think. Yeah, this was a good amount of progress, I think. So, we're going to go back and we're going to do. Wrong scene. So yes, as I was saying, we're going to go and we're going to do the usual. We're going to talk about some more Archites-related information. Let me just get everything in place for that. Yeah, 
Yes, okay. We don't have game audio, we just have the background audio, as it should be. <coughs> so yes. Actually, hmm. You know what? No, I think what I'll thinking about this again, I think we're going to yeah, I just looked over what I have prepared and I realized we haven't actually gotten uh, to a point where what I was about to say would make sense, so we're going to hold off for a little bit and we're going to play a little bit more Ark Knights. So, let's see, where were we? You two? Well, I just established that this stage looked the same as the previous one, so that doesn't help me too much. I think, I think it was two two. Yeah, had a before and after. Oh, War of Words, yes. War of Words. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I was going to discuss some characters that are going to show up soon-ish. In fact, actually, now that I think about it, I think... Now that I think about it, I think they might actually uh, show up a little bit later than I'm, than I'm remembering. I should have done a little bit more research. But anyway, so we'll we'll hold off for now. We'll hold off for now. I guess it's not entirely. Hmm. You know, I'll play I'll play one more stage, and I will and I will think about it while we play the play the stage. Yeah. I think, hmm. Yeah. The more I think about it, the it's it'll be fine. I wasn't expecting to talk about anything that would be a spoiler at any rate. We only have one sniper here, which is a little bit, oops, a little bit less than ideal in this situation, given the nature of this operation. But we do have multiple units who can attack at range. I think, did I say range unit when I met sniper earlier? Mm, I don't think so. So, we're gonna get some more deployment points. Antibile won't stand up for too long for this sort of damage, but she'll get some damage of her own end. At least Robin here. She has a little bit less attack than, than Cruz, I do believe. Only just very, very, only just very barely. There you are. Let's deploy. Who do we want to deploy? Uh, I shouldn't spend too much time thinking about this. Oh, there's a pause button, right? Right. So let's deploy. Let's deploy Nero. She's pretty tough. Here I am. Yes. Deploy some more clips. Because yes, once again. Actually, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but typically. Typically, your standard sort of sniper uh, prioritizes flying enemies, whereas other ranged units do not. And not all snipers also prioritize ranged units or flying units. Yes. So this, in addition to just the fact that uh, you know snipers are able to be deployed over a typically over more of the map makes them very important for dealing with ranged units, which can also go basically anywhere. Whereas, of course, melee units, or not melee units, but rounded units, can only can only be encountered on the ground, basically. Hence the name. Let's see. Does this give me enough range to use? No. Omnia cannot be deployed there, or cannot be deployed in such a way that she is able to attack these enemies. But what we can do is we can deploy a unit that can heal. Also, don't worry about the guns that these uh, drones have. They cannot shoot us. At least these ones can. That won't necessarily be true of every single drone ever, but it's true of these at least. Ever wonder how it feels to float in the air? Yes. There are some ranged, or there are some. What's the word I'm looking for? Not ranged. I keep saying ranged, but I'm used to, you know, splitting up our units by which ones are ranged and which ones are melee. But there are. Once again, I cannot think of the word melee units, grounded units that uh, 
Actually, now that I think about it, I don't remember what I was going to say. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I really wish I could have made a point there, but oh well. Yeah, I think, yeah, like I said, I thought over it a little bit more, and I think we're going to, I'm going to proceed with what I had originally planned tonight. Because, yeah, I don't... Yeah, nothing that I was going to say would be a spoiler. We're going to encounter some of these characters in the not-too-distant future. In the not-too-distant future. So, it might be, you know, a little bit, slightly more appropriate to discuss them then, once we've seen more of them. But, it shouldn't be an issue. That's it. Yes. So, let us get back to the studio, because I'm going to actually do the thing that I said I was going to do. Move over a little bit to make space, and there we are. So, before you, you see four operators. Yes, one of these will be familiar to you. One of these, and I guess, yeah, one of these will be familiar. We've already been introduced to Jessica to a certain extent. Uh, not extensively. We aren't extensively acquainted with her, but we have seen her. She has been around. Yes. So just as a little refresher, here's Jessica. And so we also briefly saw Vanilla and Liskarn in our uh, auto-deploy, I, I do believe. So yeah, I guess this is slightly more, slightly more relevant than I had thought it was, but yeah. So, these are all members of a group, or of a, a business, an organization, uh, known as Black Steel Worldwide, which is a private security company within the Arknight setting. So yeah. Once again, we'll be introduced to them in greater detail in the in the not too distant future. Some of them, at least, not all of them, factor into the story too much. Yeah, let me take a moment to pull up my notes because that's pretty important. Yes, so yes, this character right here is Franca. We have not seen her yet, uh, and I we will see her. We will see her. I guess. I've been trying to avoid saying precisely who we will and won't see, but oh well. But yes. If nothing else, we'll def we're definitely going to see we're definitely going to see Liskarm on my team at some point, as soon as we get to a high enough level that I can justify having her on my team, because Liskarm is definitely one of my favorite units. But I suppose I'm getting ahead of myself just a little bit. Just a little bit. Because yes, I was my notes say that we're going to start with Franca. So that is what we will do. So, Franca here is a, like I said, a member of Black Steel Worldwide, as are all four of the operators you see here. Yes, Franca is a guard operator. She is infected. Um, and so she is uh, a member of Black Steel who sort of is working with Rhodes Island at as she is getting treatment for her orpathy at Rhodes Island. Yes, this is a pretty common, pretty common way for characters to be associated with Rhodes Island. Not all of them are explicitly Rhodes Island employees. A lot of them are individuals who are infected and are essentially doing, doing some work in exchange for their treatment. Yes, so Franca, like I said, is a member of Black Steel. Black Steel Worldwide guard operator. She has a, a nifty little rapier here and also a dagger that she that she uses and she has has the ability to use her arts to superheat them and use them use them as I was going to say use them as weapons, but I suppose that's what you do with a sword normally. Anyway. Yeah, she has the ability to heat her weapons and cause additional damage in that way. Yes, she is a, I guess, yeah, well, I was going to move on, but no, there's more to say here. 
definitely should have refreshed myself on my notes a little bit more. But regardless, so Franca is known for being a little bit cheeky, a little bit of a prankster. Yeah, she's a sort of has a bit of a buddy cop dynamic with Liz Carm. Yes. Franca is sort of the, the silly one, and Liskarm is the serious one. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Ah, yes. So, some more information about Franca is that she used to be, uh, as part of Black Steel, she was part of the... Uh, oh, did I? Yes, I did write it down. The BPRS, Biological Protection Response Staff. So basically, she was deployed on missions involving biohazards and such. And I realize now that I forgot to forgot to check her in her backstory for how she got infected. But it's very possible that she was infected on such a mission. But yes. So yeah, one thing one thing that she notes is she she notes that uh, in one of her one of her lines, which I guess. I haven't really seen any character lines other than the ones that they have in combat, but know that there is a lot more to characters than just what happens in combat. There's a whole other section of the game that we really haven't touched upon in any great detail, because I'm not quite as familiar with it. Yes, there is base management, where you can have some, some more interactions with operators, as well as just being able to go into their profile go into their profile and see various lines that don't show up in combat or in or in their uh what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, don't don't occur during combat or in the base. Yes, so each operator has a file sort of detailing their their history with Rhodes Island and just sort of their history in general, I suppose. Yeah, it is presented generally from the perspective of this is information that Rhodes Island has been given by them, or has managed to gather about them, depending on circumstances. And I would go into some more of the files for a lot of these characters, but the one, the characters that are most relevant to us are ones that I don't have a whole lot of information on their files, because you unlock more, more of the file. It's not all presented to you at once. Uh, you unlock more of the file by increasing the character's trust with you, and by upgrading them. And I've specifically chosen units that I don't use very much to start out this this playthrough with. So a lot of them won't have a whole lot available to us in their file. I suppose we could always go in and see the file of some units that I have <coughs> used a little bit more. But there's no there's no unit that I have unlocked a hundred percent of their file on just yet, I don't think. But yes. So anyway, so where was I? I was talking about Franca, and then I sort of spiraled off into everything else. Anyway, <laughs> yes, Franca is a bit of a jokester, a bit of a prankster, a bit cheeky, um, and yeah, she typically often partners with uh, Liskarm here, who is, as I've said, one of one of my favorite operators to use. Yes, Liskarm is a and I don't know 100% how to pronounce this word. Uh, it is spelled V-O-I-V-R-E. Um, my inclination is to pronounce it Voiver. Or, oh, yeah, Voiver. It vaguely, I don't know, it vaguely feels almost French to me. But I looked it up and there doesn't seem to be, at the very least, it doesn't seem to be a French word. But, anyway... One thing you might you might find notable about Liskarm, if you look a little bit closer, is that she has a gun. You can't see it very well here in this specific image, but she does have a gun, much like much like Jessica does. Yes. So Liskarm is not quite unique, but is pretty pretty much a standout among defenders for having a ranged weapon. So she is a melee unit, which is, who is able to attack flying enemies. Which is, I realize now, what I was trying to get at earlier when we were talking about flying enemies and, you know, attacks and such. Yeah, anyway, certain certain melee units do have ranged weapon, ranged attacks that allow them to attack uh, flying enemies. I think I might have demonstrated that previously with uh, Cantabile. But, anyway, so, 
uh, Liskarm is a defender who can attack from a distance, and she is a also able to generate, uh, yeah, generate skill points by being attacked. I haven't used Franca before. I don't, I don't, I don't know that I have Franca. Now that I think about it, well, I think I, I'm pretty sure I do have Franca, but I have not used her at all. Whereas I have used Liskarm a fair amount. A lot of my strategies in a lot of the levels that I have played are pretty contingent on Liskarm. Yeah, that, Liskarm is one of the one of the first units that I got uh, early on in the game's life. There was a a little little thing, a little bonus where you could get got a ticket that you could exchange for one of four or five, I believe. One of four or five of the five-star operators in the game, and Liskarm is the one that I chose from that, and I'm very glad that I did. The other options would have been fine as well, but Liskarm is definitely, definitely a unit that I value quite a bit. So anyway, I've talked a lot about my personal feelings towards Liskarm. Let's talk about Liskarm the person. But yes, so Liskarm uh, has a, also has special arts, and she is notable, as we, we've established. It is not unusual for in, the infected to have various unique, or at least somewhat unique arts. But uh, Liskarm is, I think, the first character that we've discussed who has a somewhat unique ability, or at least a noteworthy uh, noteworthy ability that doesn't have anything to do with being infected because she is not. Yeah, of the Black Steel worldwide operators that we are featuring today, uh, Franca is the only one who is infected. Yeah, one thing that you will find is that it's fairly rare for operators who are not employees of, who are not employees of Rhodes Island to be infected. Uh, whereas it is pretty common for operators who are employees of Rhodes Island to be infected. But yes. So, anyway. Uh, Liskarm also works alongside Rhodes Island. In fact, she specifically applied to work with Rhodes Island because of Franca being transferred to, to, her, to Rhodes Island for treatment for her oropathy. Yeah, she figured that Franca would appreciate the presence of her, of her partner and of her uh, you know, a friend, basically. She didn't want Franca to feel alone. Uh, but Franca did not did not share that sentiment. <laughs> Franca got very, very mad when she found uh, Liskarm, that Liskarm was also joining Rhodes Island. Or, not really joining Rhodes Island, but was working with them. Yeah, I don't have too many details on that, but Black Steel and L Rhodes Island do seem to have a pretty close working relationship. Because, uh, I believe that Jessica and Vanilla are specifically mentioned as being part of a sort of Rhodes Island and Black Steel Operator Exchange program. Something to that effect. But anyway, so, this Karm uh, decided to work with Rhodes Island essentially so that, uh, to keep Franca company. Franca did not appreciate that. Yes, as, as, uh, as Liskarm is sort of the, the serious, stern, by-the-books member of their buddy cop dynamic, Franca sort of bristled at the, at the notion that the, I believe the, the term that they used was babysitter, <laughs> was going to be following her to Roge Island and keeping an eye on her still. And, uh, yes, that is, that is a little insight into their, into their dynamic. And one thing, one thing that I often see, I often see sort of their relationship dynamic depicted in fan fan art and fan works and whatnot as being sort of a a situation where Liskarm is usually usually depicted as being somewhat sundere. She is the one who is always like, you know, being teased and prodded by Franca. And while I'm sure that Franca does tease and prod Liskarm, like she is definitely of the two not the one who specifically said to, about the other, oh yeah, she's going to be working in an unfamiliar place without the people that she knows. I need to be with her specifically that, so that she won't feel lonely. I do not want her to feel alone. Because Liskarm is not, you know, does not hide this. This is, this is information that is readily available. This is the specific stated reason why she works with Rhodes Island. So yes, so if anyone, 
And yeah, and then in turn, Franca is the one who specifically protested against Liskarm joining Rhodes Island and just being there in general. So, you know, I don't care too much for Sundere as a character type, but if you're going to depict one of them as a Sundere, it's, it should be Franca if you want to be true to the game. But I suppose Liskarm, Liskarm matches the traditional sort of st serious, somewhat standoffish, I suppose, uh, notion of a, of a Sundere a little bit more than the whimsical, whimsical, goofy Franca. But yes. So, moving on, Jessica. So we've seen a little bit of Jessica before. She was the protagonist of some of the tutorials, and more specifically, she was the she had a, a very funny line in one of the tutorials that I am so sad that I missed. I'm so sad that I missed, and I had thought that I would have seen it by this point, so I'm not going to go over it too much. But uh, it's very good, and I'm I guess it's not you know that funny, but it does have some some notable implications. But yeah. So anyway. So, Jessica here has a gun, as noted. Just realized my. Mm. I think I'll need to adjust the crop on the. I need to adjust the crop on this because it's definitely a bit too big. Mm. Maybe I shouldn't spend the time to deal with it right now. We'll, yeah, get a little bit closer to how it should be and just leave it at that. <coughs> anyway, so, Jessica, like I said, has a gun, which is pretty remarkably rare in Terra. Very few people have them, as I've said before, I believe. And the ammunition is quite expensive, because uh, I don't know when or if this will be discussed in story, but ammunition in this setting is not made with gunpowder. Gunpowder was never invented. Instead, uh, ammunition is based on originium. <clears throat> Essentially, you have to use uh, arts to act to, like, you have to use arts to activate the originium in the in the bullet to fire it. Basically, so they have to be very specially crafted, and they're quite dangerous because, again, originium is a biohazard that causes oropathy and is generally just, you know, hard to deal with and quite, you know, quite valuable. Quite valuable as a material. It is a very important energy source, and so weaponry that makes use of it is itself quite valuable. And so as stated, I do remember that we did see that in one of the tutorials. Uh, Jessica's weapon, rather than being furnished, or yeah, her weapons rather than being furnished by Blacksteel is actually a thing that she purchased herself with her own money, which is quite notable indeed. I think we'll get into that a little bit more later, because we definitely, yeah, we'll get into it more later. Yeah, the implications are are going to be what they will be for the time being. But yeah, so Jessica is well known among the Arknights fan community. She is often referred to as the sad cat or just as sad cat, I suppose. Yes, she's more, she's a little bit more anxious than she is sad in, in my, my uh, understanding. But, you know, she looks sad. She looks sad. She definitely looks sad. So it's not a terribly, terribly unreasonable uh, comparison to make. Yes, so we don't know a whole lot about Jessica just yet. You will know more about her in the future, but what we do know so far is that she is independently wealthy of her of her work as a mercenary and private security contractor. Yeah, some other things to note about her is that she is often she uh, gets along pretty well with other other folks, uh, or at least she is naturally naturally trusted. She's actually quite competent as well. And the main thing that holds her back from achieving higher positions is simply her own timidity. Her own sort of sense of, you know, being nervous and a little bit self-effacing. 
which is probably true of a, of a lot of people. Possibly also true of myself. <laughs> but yes, anyway. So, that is Jessica. There's a little bit more to say, but once again, I will hold off on it for, for right now. And so yeah, we are getting a little bit towards, uh, a little bit later than I would like also. Yeah. I guess it's not super late, but it is about the time that we, I like to be done by. And granted, I make that fairly early so that I have some leeway if I go over time. Ah. Hello there, Rain Tenebris. Good evening to you as well. Yeah, we were just wrapping up with a little bit of discussion about Arknight's characters. Yeah, I suppose I should probably, like I said, since we're getting towards the end, I should probably try to be a little bit quicker because there's a fair amount more to go over. But yes, so this here is Vanilla, our final operator that we will be discussing tonight. Yeah, so Vanilla is the lowest rare, the lowest star level of all of the uh, black steel units that are available to us. She is only a three star. But, uh, and she is a newer employee of uh, a newer employee of Black Steel Worldwide compared to to the others. Yeah, she is also a Voiver, as uh, Liskarm is, but she does not have any notable abilities. Uh, yeah, does not have any any real notable abilities or anything like that. Uh, what is notable about her, however, is the fact that she is quite an animal lover. She has a number of of pets including a number of Originium Slugs, which you may recognize as some of the enemies that we have been facing in a few of our missions. Sit. So, yeah, she has two pet Originium Slugs uh, named Tiny and Kuro. Kuro, at one point in the global version, was, was named Biggie, but the name was changed at a, at a later date. One thing that's notable is that a lot of... A lot of uh, Translations have been revised at various points during Arknight's, uh, Arknight's history in the global version. So yeah, there's a lot of the time this is mostly just things are rephrased a little bit. Sometimes a little bit of information is changed or a little bit of information is added or removed. Sometimes a fair amount is. And, you know, that can be a little bit divisive. In general, I've found that the in general, I've found that the, you know, dialogue from later events is typically a little bit better than that from early, the early days of the game, when they didn't have quite as much presence, and probably didn't want to spend quite as much on the, the global version until they could be certain that it would be a success. Yeah, anyway, so Vanilla has two pet Originium Slugs, and she also has a pet Metal Crab which I, is a creature that I had also been planning that we would have discussed before, or that we would have encountered before. But, uh, in short, that is another type of enemy that we will face. Metal crabs are pretty fun. We'll probably talk about them. At least, uh, dedicate some time to talk about metal crabs at the, in the not-too-distant future. But yes, anyway. Probably more to be said about vanilla. But, uh, like I said, there is more I want to go over. And what I want to go over is... Ba -ba -ba. What I want to go over is... Ashen. Or more specifically, I want to go over the various uh, additional art that exists of these various characters. Yeah, unfortunately, Vanilla does not have an upgraded form and does not have a any skins available to her. Once again, she is... In a little bit of a, has a little bit less of the spotlight compared to the others. But yes, so before, uh, up to this point, we have seen characters pretty much exclusively in their base form, in their standard art. But once you upgrade a character to Elite 2, which is only possible for characters that are 4 star rarity or higher, they also have another piece of artwork that uh, they start to use. Yeah, so this, for instance, is Liskarm's, this is Franca's, and this is Jessica's. Once again, Vanilla as a three-star does not have such a does not have a promoted artwork. But yes. So each character has, like I said, that can be promoted to Elite 2, 
has a specific artwork for that. Yeah, you will see in a lot of cases, none of these cases actually, but actually no, never mind. I guess, yeah, we have seen, we have seen promoted artwork from some characters last time, right? But yes, you will often see the creature that each operator is based on showing up in their art somewhere. So in Jessica's, you see a, a cat here. Yeah, there's no fox to be seen in Franca's, nor a dragon to be seen in Lisk Arms, however. But yes. So usually, the Elite 2 artwork depicts the operator in a more dynamic pose, typically with some, possibly with something going on. Once again, like I said, with often with a creature representing them in the background. Yeah, typically these creatures are non-diegetic. They aren't necessarily anything that actually appears in the game and or anything that exists in the world. Sit. This isn't necessarily always the case, though, as we learned last time, where I specifically featured some characters who did have did have creatures that showed up in their Elite 2 artwork that also tied into their lore. Yeah, as you can see here, Renka's outfit is slightly different from her Elite 1 to her Elite 2. Yeah, you'll notice that the resolution on some of these is also slightly different. Yeah, basically, the character sprites are always, well, you know, a lot of the a lot of the character sprites are 1024 by 1024, uh, and the artwork for the Elite 2 is a little bit bigger. It takes up a little bit more space, so the actual character, you know, has less resolution to 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 take, basically. Yeah. Anyway, so. The character's outfit can change a little bit from one sprite to the other, but typically the, or yeah, the actual like sprite that appears in combat does not change from Elite One to Elite Two. If you want to have different sprites in combat, then that is what outfits are for. Yes, so you can purchase additional outfits for your characters with. Uh, I guess I haven't talked about the various currencies that this game uses. I guess. Various is a strong word. There's only, hmm, yeah, in this context, there's only, only one that's relevant to outfits. But yeah, these are currencies that are related to the, you know, microtransactions and all that, which is another thing that I haven't mentioned. But it is something that I do plan to address to some extent. But yes. So this, for instance, is a outfit for Liskarm, as you may have noticed from the fact that this is an image of Liskarm. Yeah, you can see the outfit is different and all that. There's original artwork for that and all. This is another one of Liskarm's skin, skins. This one is actually associated with, but I don't think exclusive to, the uh, Rainbow Six Siege crossover that, that uh, I was going to say Rhodes Island, but that's not quite accurate, that uh, Arknights had, which uh, has never rerun and may very well never rerun again. Yes, I think you can get it outside of that. I don't think it's exclusive to to that specific event, unlike the or the unlike the Rainbow Six operators themselves. Fortunately, I do have all the Rainbow Six operators, so I might be able to demonstrate them at some point. I don't know why I said might be able to. I will be able to. It's only a matter of if I decide to. Yes, and so here are a few of Jessica's outfits. Yes, we have this very... This one's very interesting. I especially like her, her little mask. I suppose I probably didn't need to tell you that I'm fond of masks, but... I like her little, very, very cute gas mask here. Yes, the Hazard and Disenvironment Equipment. Yes, each, each little outfit comes with a little blurb describing like what it is, what the purpose of it is, generally speaking, the fashion brand, the in-universe fashion brand that it is from. And yeah, some of them some of them have a fair amount of, of detail to them. But I didn't uh, think of that. I didn't think to include that in my notes. So that is information that we might have to go over at a later date. 
this outfit of Jessica's is 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 notable for being the only the only outfit in which she smiles, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's a nice it's a nice look too. But yeah, I did want to discuss the outfits a little bit more, but like I said, it is getting a little bit later than I would like. So, I think real quick I will just talk about I'll just yeah I will say which of them I like the most. Or maybe I'll just go over a few details of each each artwork that I like. Yeah, I think honestly I like Liskarm's standard look a little a little bit more than the others. I think her outfit is pretty much the same from Elite 1 to Elite 2. There's the belt there, but there's also hints of it here. I don't know that, the, that that's the same item. But her outfit's pretty similar. Not 100% the same. Yeah, I like her, her base artwork probably the most out of all of these. But I do like I do like this skin as well. I like the I like the tactical vest. Yeah, it's a, also a very impressive looking scene. I suppose I didn't mention it before, but uh what yeah. A notable trait of Liskarms is that her shield has a number of flashbangs built into it. That she, or I guess, yeah, it doesn't have flashbangs built into it. It just has very, very bright lights built into it that she powers with her electricity. Yes, yeah, so those of you who are familiar with Rainbow Six Siege may also uh, may find a connection there between her and Blitz, and there have been many, many jokes made about the about them being connected. And I believe she also showed up in the. Rainbow Six Siege event, but I don't remember to what extent. Yes, so I like Liskarm's standard outfit the most, in short. That's my favorite of Liskarm's looks. For Franca, <clears throat> once again, the outfits are pretty similar from Elite, or from Standard to Elite 2, but I do like the Elite 2 a little bit more. Yeah, I like the, I like the more dynamic pose. Which again is pretty much a feature of Elite 2 versus Standard. I like the more dynamic pose. I like the. I don't know if this is a cape or whatever this is, this sort of banner. Yeah, I like the drone that we. I don't think we ever see her use in, in actual gameplay. I like the gun that we definitely don't see her use in actual gameplay. But yes. Yeah, I like. Yeah, like I said, I like Franca's Elite 2 a little bit more than the her basic art. For Vanilla, it's Vanilla. Vanilla is Vanilla. But yes, I do... Honestly, I kind of want to give the... kind of want to give it to this skin of Jessica's just because of the mask. But I'm not going to be too much... too... Eh. I will not allow my blatant favoritism to influence me too much. But yeah, setting that aside, I find the I find the sort of use of color and the motifs in, in Jessica's Elite 2 artwork to be very interesting. The looming darkness and sort of it almost looks like flame or perhaps smoke. This strange dark essence around her. Yeah, not sure what's going on with that. But yeah, I find it I find it intriguing. Yes. I like that Jessica smiles in this artwork. That's nice. Yeah. It's a nice outfit too. Definitely, if I were choosing just based on the outfit, which I probably I think I made it sound like I was, but if I was choosing just based on the outfit, probably this would be my favorite of Jessica's outfits. Yeah, this one's this one's not too bad either. Yeah, it's a very it's a very sort of rugged look for her. I like the I like the uh, climbing pick in the back there. That's a that's a, a tool that I like the look of in general. But, uh, but yeah, I think all of that being said, I think I'm going to give the crown for Jessica to. Yeah, I think I'm going to give it to her. Do this outfit. Should have written down the names of these. Oh well. 
more for next time. We're always learning. So yeah, I think that should cover us basically at this point. Yeah, we've gone over time a little bit, but that's fine. It's not a big deal. So it is time for the usual uh, closing. So as of we're, we're finishing up. So let's see, what do we need to go over first? Uh, once again, there will most likely not be a stream tomorrow specifically, but I will. I am planning on having another stream sometime this week, either Thursday or not Thursday. Tomorrow is Thursday. Friday or Saturday, possibly both, but more likely Friday of any day. Sit. It'll depend a little bit on my work schedule, though, which I need to double check because I don't know what it is. But yes. So, definitely not a stream tomorrow, in almost certainly. Probably a stream Friday, and if not, then uh, Saturday. Possibly one on both Friday and Saturday, especially because, once again, I'm trying to sort of catch up on some Arknight's time that I have missed so that I can be a little bit further along by the time that we get to the get to the crossover with Monster Hunter. Yes. Let's see. I guess that's basically everything. Yeah, next week we are expecting to, or we are expecting... I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say expecting, because again, I don't really know the details. In fact, I'm not 100% sure that Sheps knows the details, but next week, hopefully, we will be back to doing the usual Wednesday collab with Sheppy Sheps. We will be playing uh, Coffee Talk, a new game. And, yeah, I suppose that's basically everything that needs to be said. <coughs> so, as per usual, we're going to be doing a raid. If anyone has any raid targets, I would look any raid targets in mind, I would be glad to hear them. The customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. <clears throat> yeah, looks like we don't have any suggestions. I'll give it a few more seconds here. But, assuming I don't get anything, I think we will go and drop by the Oh, that's not how you spell that. There we are. In the middle of some Final Fantasy XIV, it looks like. Which I have started playing recently. Started playing it again recently. So I might not be around for too long so that I don't get spoilers or anything. But, I'm definitely ready to drop by and visit, if nothing else, for a little while. So yeah, I think that should be everything that needs to be said. We already went over the lack thereof a schedule. We went over the hope for next week's schedule. And yeah, that should be basically everything that needs to be covered. So, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you've had a fine night. I hope that you'll continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much, and farewell. Let us get this raid underway. <laughs>